Hello, my name is Bo Hannum. Welcome to Bo Hannum Guitars and Ukuleles. I thought today I would talk about head blocks and how to get free ones, basically, out of uh, off cuts of you know neck wood and weird shape bits and pieces that you kind of find. Um, so something like that is. You know, you can do a few things with it. You could make a door stop, <laughs> or you could uh, make probably cut it in half and then join it, and that could make a neck block. So uh, there are a few things you could do with it. You could, if it was a little bit longer, you could get a, a scarfed head stock out of it. Um, but what I usually use these bits for and mostly smaller bits uh, for head blocks and this is kind of the types of you know size and shape that I usually get head blocks out of so if you've got something this size then you have a pre-made head block and then just draw around it and you can get what you want out of that. Otherwise if there's a small bit of wood that you want to use, just get your either a pre-made head block or a template and I just mark the line on that. And then if there is excess like this, then I just bandsaw that away until I get to something like that. And then I will do the following. There's all uh, bits from that I've been working on, just scrap little bits, and here are some that I'm still yet to shape. I did about 20 yesterday. <coughs> 12 inch disc sander, Mr. Disky. You want this to be a right angle. And then, so this drawing here, that corresponds to that. And that's just a good marker for That's good enough for now. So, that is, you know, pretty close to that line. Um, the other thing I do is this face, and then I shape this, these corners however I want it. Um, so if you look at, so this is going to be the face inside the instrument, so that face, so this is the, this will be glued to the sides, and this is the face inside the instrument. Um, sometimes I do a more of a curve like this. Sometimes I do 
you know a tighter curve here and here it just kind of depends on the, the final shape of the scrap that it would the other thing I use which I'll talk about in a second is these little bits these are the extensions that I use and <laughs> you, you definitely will have a lot of bits of these sizes um, this was full yesterday and I've been working through them just preparing them and they will all get stuck to them but let me show you So do okay, so here you can see kind of two slightly different types. This one's a bit more curvy, this one's a bit more standard I suppose it's, it's got the it doesn't one thing I don't like is uh, just hard edges like you see on uh, factory instruments I like you know a, a nice curve like that that's a bit nicer I like the sometimes I even do kind of a full curve like that and you can maybe see it a bit better this angle but my so I put a bolt in here for ukes and two bolts for guitars and then I put a, a piece of paper over that with my name and a, a wax seal and it, it's a little bit harder to glue to the the curved edge so I tend to go with this one so from 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 this stage which has got a line in there which you might not be able to see and you shape it the way I did out there and I think I left that little bit uh, then I shellac all of them so all these have been shellacked and it doesn't matter if you get some on this edge or up here or here at the moment and so from that point I will get the this is the shellacked headlock uh, I'll get the face that I want to glue the extension onto and I'll just get um, a little straight edge and check for how straight it is then I'll get a bit of fresh 80 grit sandpaper and just work it flatter and uh, just make sure all the shellac is gone and uh, so it's a nice face to glue to and I'll do the same to the head block extension and then I will put them down like this so this is end grain here and this is end grain here and then I'll glue that to that and so what you come up with or end up with is this So, like I said, it doesn't matter if shellac and stuff gets on this face because you still have to sand this back and shape it. And so, from there, you get this. And another really good trick to use is to sand the extension. at an angle so 
so the top is going to get glued to this and you want this at an angle that isn't the same as the grain lines coming down so if this crosses over a couple of grain lines that's great um, and why I use the extension well this is a top This is the upper transverse brace. So when you glue this, when I glue this to here, and then I'll have to cut that back obviously, be left with this. What this extension does, that gives a really strong, sturdy joint it butts up against the upper transverse brace and it's not such a problem on ukes although I, I just do this on ukes uh, just because that's the way I build and it's just a good kind of building principle um, it stops the if you just glue that onto there you're left with this little space in here. Like I said, it's not such a big problem on you. Put on guitars, it's uh, it's a problem. So this area is susceptible to movement, and the whole top is susceptible to movement. But especially this area and along the the edges of the head block and fingerboard, uh, it the top under string tension can uh, distort and the, the whole geometry of the instrument uh, <laughs> dies basically. It's a really horrible repair and something to happen to your instrument if you get cracks along the sides of the head block or fingerboard. The other thing which I didn't make note of before was the extension and the head block absolutely absolutely have to be wider than the fingerboard and if you just glue the, the worst thing you can do is glue a piece of wood to another piece of wood and those two bits of wood are not dimensionally compatible and normally a fingerboard is ebony and that's not a very stable wood it's, it's I don't like using it and if you glue that on or you know very near a grain line like that that's just going to crack and to sort of minimize that if you have this on there and then the fingerboard being say that big you can see sort of trying to do a 3D puzzle here, but uh, that makes the possibility of cracks along here less. I never say it stops it or, or anything, it's just, you, you know, we're always trying to minimize things. And although this is a bit of over-engineering for a uke, uh, it's, it's just a good building practice. And the other way to do this is to, so if you glue that onto there, you can add, um, you can just chop this off kind of here and then glue that in, in there as kind of a pack up. I used to do that for like 10 years and then side sound ports came into the picture. And then you realize that that isn't a very aesthetically pleasing thing to see when you're looking through the side sound board, which would be here on a right-handed guitar, and you're looking up and you're seeing these kind of weird mismatched bits of wood. And so if you uh, just use up your scraps like this, makes for a 
much nicer looking inside. And then I usually plane this down if my, this is a old top, so my head block is, I mean my upper transverse brace is taller now, but uh, I would sand and plane this down so it's roughly this size or this height. And I wouldn't do it to the whole thing, just kind of the end. Um, what else can I say about this? I tend to use a pretty fat head block. And so you can see my head blocks there, are, because I'm getting these out of scrap, they're a bit different width or thickness. Um, that, that doesn't matter. Not one of these is the same. Um, they have different profile here, or different here, or different thickness this way. Um, this one, I'm going to draw the line at because it's a bit too thin. Because I do need some uh, depth here because I this is glued to the sides, and then I've got the tenon mortise and tenon in here and then I recess the bolt in here the bolt goes in there somewhere in the middle and so I need a little bit of wood in here to to make the whole thing uh, work well and if it's if it's too thin here then the the mortise tenon comes in here the bolt recesses here, and I've only got a little bit of wood, if that makes sense. Uh, and so the end result is, I'll show you. So the top's going to go on there. <laughs> Stop. Uh, so you have to fit the top and then figure out where this transverse brace lies and then draw a line in here and cut that excess off. Um, so looking through the side port, it looks nice. nicer than it would if it was uh, the other way. And you can see this has a bit more of an obvious splay which will uh, just help the top not splitting from the, that problem area. Uh, I think that's all I have to mention. Um, one last thing I suppose is the easiest way I've found to glue these is that on there, that on there and just leave you know a bit of excess. Don't don't try and go for flush or anything. Uh, actually it's this way. And then so use your bench and then just put one clamp here. clamp there and then I clean the glue squeeze out all around and paint brush it uh, with water uh, and so you will end up with this which is pretty clean there's still a bit of glue here but you can just scrape that off and then once I uh, so once that's actually how it comes off 
the bench here and then I take it back to the disc sander sand this so this point touches this point and you can see I touch it a little bit here uh, and then I just shellac this and don't worry about the end grain here uh, and then just re-shellac actually don't re-shellac here um, glue this on to the instrument and then I put linings on and the back on and then I shellac the whole thing on the inside like I've done with this one and then you can get right up into the corner in there so I hope that was of help how to use up weird bits of um, you know little bits of wood and there's so many reasons to throw away uh, little bits of wood I find and then it, it took me it took me a couple of years of trying to figure out what to do with these little bits like I used to chuck that away but um, then when I started doing side sound ports I wanted to get a cleaner look on the inside so then I started doing it this way actually the very first time I did it I used to cut this out of a solid bit of wood but it's it's a pain to cut that away uh, and to, to shape this area smooth and then this area round uh, I it's easy to do it this way and I think it looks nicer um, but I'll leave it up to you uh, the only other thing I can think of is off the disc sander the 12 inch disc sander this has got some heavy scratches in it so I take it to my belt sander and say the belt's running this way I just shape it this way on the belt sander and that gets rid of visible scratches I'm not sure if you'll be able you can see it but if you really look closely you can see some sort of 180 grit scratches but the, they're going with the grain and I don't worry about them uh, so I hope that was of help thank you for watching and if you like luthier tips and tricks and other bits and pieces then please subscribe to my channel and if you have any questions let me know Thank you.